Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we find out just how good or how bad Alma T. Lee really is. Run that video. <music> All right then, folks, then welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. Thank you, friends and allies, for joining us for another exciting episode. So on today's episode, we blind El Matili against two other whiskies, Ancient Ancient Age and Buffalo Trace Single Barrels. Why are we blinding them against these two? Well, lately and truthfully, I've been throwing a little bit of shade El Matili's way. If you've watched the review, you definitely want to go and watch the El Matili review before you watch this video. And I've been saying a lot of stuff. I've also been saying that I think El Matili is probably just as good as Ancient Age. Not Ancient Ancient Age, but just Ancient Age. And I think that Buffalo Trace single barrels are better than El Matili. Bear in mind, El Matili, yes, MSRP $40 $50. However, very hard to find where these two are probably a lot easier to find there. So what I want to do, because I kind of believe, I kind of believe in the scientific method a little bit. And I hypothesize, I hypothesize that El Matili is not as good as these two. And we're going to blind that to hypothesis. I'm going to find out for real. Is El Matili worse than Ancient Ancient Age and Buffalo Trace single barrels? Yes, we could have done regular Buffalo trace but El Matili is a single barrel so I wanted to do another single barrel against it at least which is why we went from Buffalo Trace single barrel. So what single barrel is this? So this is from Argonaut Wine and Liquor down in Denver, Colorado. I didn't pick any specific barrel. I have a bunch of these and I just picked the first one uh, so I try to be as unbiased as I can. I didn't, like I said, I have a bunch of them from different stores and this is just a random one that was pulled. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to get these whiskey into glasses and then I'm going to mix them up and then I'm also going to have my wife mix them up as well. We're going to do this double blind. So what does double blind mean? So just a regular blind is I will put them in the glasses and then my wife will mix them up after seeing me put them in the glasses. So she will know the order. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put them in, mix them up first so that she doesn't know which one is which. And then she will mix them up again. So let's get these whiskeys into glasses and then we'll get them mixed up and then we'll come back. All right then folks, and we are back. So these have been mixed up like we talked about, double blind. I have no idea which whiskey is in which glass. Perfect, because that's exactly what we wanted for this to be a fair test. So before we get into these, uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It is the best, best, best way for you folks to give back to the channel. And it also lets me know that you folks at home are enjoying the content. And also I take all the comments very seriously. So if you have any recommendations, I really appreciate them. And I will consider them as well because I really like to put out content that you guys will watch and girls at home there as well. With that being said, if you would like to support the channel even further, we have a Patreon. And we also have the Whiskey Cove website on the whiskeycove.square.site. The link is down below where you can find some premium glassware, much like the Space Eye Tasters that you can see today. Also, we have an excellent discount on a full pack of the Space Out Tasters and some other glasses there, so go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into this taste, and I'm very excited to be proved wrong here. However, let's see what happens. So I think we will go from your left to your right, and this is going to be glass one, two, and three. I have the answer key firmly in my pocket because I have a habit of forgetting the, where it is. So we have it already. Like I said, I have no idea which glass is which and which number is correlated to that whiskey. With that being said, and with all the talking, let's get down to business. Glass number one. I'm not going to look at color uh, because I, I, sometimes when I uh, look at different colors of whiskey, it can lead me in a different direction. So we're just going to go nose palette finish. A little bit spicy on the nose, actually. Definitely a little bit of spice there. Kind of getting some, uh, like a red, red pepper spice. And not a red bell pepper. Like, you know, sometimes when you have that pepper shaker uh, and they have like a bunch of, like a medley of different peppers, it's those kind of like red ones. Because they almost have like a little bit of freakiness to them. That's kind of what's in here. Definitely like a bit of ice cream vanilla in there as well. And maybe green apple and cherry. They are the two major fruits I get from Buffalo Trace products. And these are all Buffalo Trace products. They're all made by Buffalo Trace down in Frankfurt, Kentucky. It's a pretty good nose. There's not too much going on there. But what it does, it does okay. They're pretty balanced between the sweet, vanilla -y and spicier notes. Okay then, folks. Well, actually, there's not much wood presence here. 
and there's a touch, touch of ethanol. Let's go in for a taste, glass one. So immediately, what do I get on the palate? I definitely get some spice, that's the first thing, and I definitely get some heat, which lends to that Kentucky hug as it goes down towards the finish. This, like I said, I wasn't really picking up any wood on the nose, but it's definitely there on the palate. The palate's a little thin. There's not too, there's not much sweetness with this one. It's more of a drier, leathery experience. And maybe like a tobacco note, like a chewing tobacco note with that spicy note there as well. There is a somewhat decent coating on the mouth there as well, which sticks around with the spice quite well and that wood backbone but it's not very sweet. You don't really get some of that caramel, burnt brown sugar, uh, barrel char notes with this one. It's kind of more about the wood. And again, a little bit of that heat definitely comes through. Let's go in for another taste here. I'm not really picking out any cherry, any apple on the palate. Like I said, it's a very dry palate. I wish it was sweeter. I wish it was more balanced. It definitely leans towards a drier, thinner whiskey. So far, kind of par for the course of what I was expecting with these whiskeys. So then let's cleanse the palate and move on to glass two here. So to cleanse the palate, we're just using water and we're putting it into the Whiskey Cove Premium Rocks glass. You can kill someone with this glass. It's a proper rocks glass, perfect for a circular ice cube in an old fashioned, that's for sure. Let's move on to glass number two here. This is a lot, a lot different. So much different than glass one. It has like a, um, it has like a, almost like an orange dreamsicle note there. That vanilla and then a touch of uh, citrus. This is a very, very nice, pleasant nose. There's definitely a little bit of uh, spicy undertones there, like a rice spice undertone. But that like uh, orange dreamsicle note is a perfect note for this. I'm definitely get it, getting it. It reminds me, as soon as I know it, it took me straight back to when I did the Buffalo Trace tour in, in uh, Frankfurt. And when you do the like, general tour that they have, at the end they do a tasting with you. And you have, uh, you have Sazerac, you have Buffalo Trace, you have Eagle Rare, uh, you have one of their root beers, and you also have the Buffalo Trace cream and a chocolate piece of chocolate as well. And it definitely smells like one of the whiskeys that I had there, which must be the Buffalo Trace, but who knows at this point. But it's a lot more complex than glass one, and that's what we're judging it against so far. A very inviting nose. Let's see what it does on the palate, glass two. So you definitely get some of that citrus that comes through to the palate, and there is a touch of vanilla there as well, but it's not really like a sweet ice cream dreamsicle vanilla anymore. It's definitely the spice and oak is taking it over, and you're definitely getting a drier experience here as well, like you did with glass one. But with glass one, it was just like tasting it dry. But with this one, you taste it and it's a little bit more oily and there's definitely more sweetness there as well. So even though uh, the dryness, uh, the oak backbone does come through a little bit, you get a little bit of those two different palates and the oak and the dryness is more on the finish. This is not hot whatsoever. Very tame in terms of ethanol. Very drinkable, very enjoyable. It's just a little bit thin on the finish. There's not too much going on there, but that nose, that nose is really great. I really like that nose a lot. Let's go for another taste, this is glass two. Yeah, I'm not really picking much else. The spicy notes come from the rye spice. I get a lot, a lot of times when I taste rye, yes, I get sometimes get like a vanilla spearmint note, but I also, I really, I like hits my tongue a lot. And you're definitely getting that with this one. Mouthfeel, much, much better than glass one. And I think that's a credit to um, a li that little bit of sweetness that you get on the palate. Finish again, that kind of dries out, but not as dry as glass one. But stepping it up, I feel like a little bit so far. Let's cleanse the palate and go into glass three. This is almost like a little bit of a combination between the, the two that have come before. You're not getting that citrus note anymore. You're getting a little bit of like uh, that, that Buffalo Trace cherry, if you like. When I say Buffalo Trace cherry, I feel like it's more leaning towards like a bacon cherry, like those candied uh, bright red ones. And by the way, if you're using bacon cherries, and obviously use what's available, 
you need to make the transition to maraschino or the darker cherries. And if you can't afford the maraschino cherries, a good hack for that, go to Walmart, go to your local grocery store, go to the frozen, uh, the frozen department, and they have uh, frozen dark cherries, like in a bag for like a dollar, and they are basically like maraschino cherries. And what's good about them is that they're frozen as well. So when you put them into an old fashioned, they add a little bit of that cooling element as well to it. You can just use those instead of ice cubes, but that's a really great advice I can give you. And they're like really cheap. You're paying like $20 for a jar of maraschino cherries. You can get a pack of frozen dark cherries uh, from your local grocery store. So definitely do that. But yeah, with this, that, that candied bacon cherries coming through, you're getting some of that vanilla note that I had here. Yes, it was more of a dreamsicle note because of the citrus, but it's just more of the isolated vanilla ice cream type note here. So okay, there's a little bit of heat there, a little bit of spice backbone. There's not too much more else going on there. There's a little bit more of a sweetness as with this as well. Let's go in for a taste here, glass three. So much like glass two, it's definitely an evident sweetness up front. But I feel like the sweetness with this travels a little bit more. It rolls a little bit more into the finish. Well, this was more of like, a, the second glass was more like a sudden stop. And I feel like you get more of the sweetness and then the oak takes over. But this, it's, it's more of a, like a, an equal, equal amount going into the finish. And then as soon as it hits the finish, it does dry out a little bit. Also very oily and very complete there as well. Let's go in for another taste to see if we can pick up any notes on the finish and palette. On the second pass, kind of get some like cream soda uh, type notes on there, which makes complete sense. You know, you get that creamy vanilla note there as well. And you get that really nice buffalo trace oak backbone with this. It's a good whiskey. It's pretty decent right now. I think that after, what I'll do is we'll pause the video and then we'll taste through these a little bit more. And then we'll come back as always with the results. All right then folks, and we are back. And as always, with much deliberation, we have the answers that we need. Or we all have the answers, but we have everything in order right now. So, let's just start, or let's just premise by saying there was definitely one whiskey that was way off the pace than the other two. Is it El Matilli? I guess we'll find out. Uh, this, that was definitely glass one. Very thin, there was not much going on there, not much on the nose. Uh, struggling to pick up flavors. We'll see what uh, we'll see exactly what it is soon. But um, compared to the other two, it was like I said, it was just way off the pace, and that was glass one. So with that being said, let's find out what it was in glass one. I'm kind of nervous at this point because if this is El Matili, then it's it's been a pretty shocking whiskey. Let's wait and see. So this is B for Bravo, and that is going to be ancient, ancient age. So I said in a previous video that I felt like Ancient Ancient Age was better than Elma T. Lee. That was a broad statement uh, that I guess I need to apologize right now because today has revealed that it is not better than Ancient Age because that was way off the pace. So that was, like I said, glass one, Ancient Ancient Age, which is just a little bit thin. I've drunk this a lot as a daily sipper and maybe it's just because it's just that. It's a little bit thin, I can drink it at any time. However, today it, it just was nowhere near these other two. With that being said, we have two left. I hope, I kind of do when I don't want Elmer T. Lee to win. I do want it to win because I have two bottles and it's, you know, people try to look for it and it's a cool story. It's a good whiskey, apparently. Uh, but then I, I also want Buffalo Tray Single Barrel to win because I have a bunch of them and I've always said that Buffalo Tray Single Barrels are some of the best value for, whis uh, for money that there is in whiskey. With that being said, Glass 3 was second place. And it was second place because I felt that it had an equal palette to Glass 2, but Glass 2, that nose is just so, like that orange creamsicle note, is just so inviting. And I can nose this for quite a while. So I guess let's find out what was in glass three. And that is gonna be C for Charlie. <laughs> and that is Elmer T. Lee. Come on! I predicted it. I guess that, El, you know, I wanted Elmer T. Lee to do well, but didn't, and it came in second. So. Does that answer some questions for us? And let's just make sure we have everything because glass one is gonna be A for Alpha and that is Buffalo Trace Single Barrel. So yes, Buffalo Trace Single Barrel, like I said, excellent value for money. 
What you need to do at home, folks, is that you need to stop chasing El Matili single barrel. I cannot say this enough. It is not worth the hunt. It is not worth paying over odds. Just get yourself a Buffalo Trace single barrel. <laughs> I'm really excited because I've just, uh, it's, it's come true what I predicted and I didn't want to look like I had egg on my face because I try to bring everybody home the real results and stuff. So I'm never gonna like re-record or do some other funky stuff. I will always put out the content that I record just so you folks at home know exactly what's going on. You know exactly what my pal did. There is no BS here. So it's Buffalo Trey single barrel that takes home the victory today. And Almatili was okay. I, it, the nose was a little better than I remember it to be during other blinds and uh, doing the review. Oh, well, I say the nose, the palate, sorry. The nose was just okay. The palate was a little better and had more oak towards the finish. So in this blind, it did okay. Uh, the Ancient Ancient Age kind of disappointed me a little bit. I didn't think it would be that bad, but the Buffalo Trace single barrels are today's winner. And like I always, always say, if you see a Buffalo Trace single barrel, you pick it up. 25 to $30 over an El Matili any day of the week. And that's why it was in one of the best value bourbons that you can ever get. Buffalo Trace single barrel is today's winner. So as we drink through the world's whiskeys, one glass at a time, cheers.